there's very little point in, say, uh, fire agencies um, in their community bushfire safety education overwhelming people you know, with information about the things that they should do uh, uh, to, to be safe in a, in, a, in a bushfire. We were trying to outrun a fire that was in front of us the whole time. Running down the street, you just, we, that, oh, we had enough. You can only run for so long. We weren't expecting to see today. We really weren't. Stress and anxiety interferes with your ability to concentrate. Uh, in, in my jargon, uh, it degrades your attention control uh, skills. Uh, so you get distracted. Uh, you, it's very hard to, um, to maintain a focus on, on what's really important. The issue we set out to address was whether unduly high levels of anxiety may be contributing in a subset of the population to the poor preparation uh, for, the, for threat and if so whether using these bias modification techniques that we've developed we could uh, m moderate the information processing biases in ways that might leave people better able to undertake preparatory action. What we found was that anxiety can be very beneficial to good preparatory behaviour and I wouldn't want to extend from that to say that anxiety is therefore beneficial in any threatening situation. I think it may be quite different when people are having to keep a cool head under very imminent uh, exposure to danger. But in terms of, of preparation, the, the, the findings we had were uh, actually quite illuminating and suggested that anxiety brings benefits as well as costs. Well, one of the things that had been noticed in some of the interviews that followed up um, fires that had taken place here in West Australia and in fact in other parts of the country too was that there, there seemed to be big differences not just between individuals and households but communities as a whole um, in the level of preparation that they'd undertaken and some of their responses to the fire as well the sorts of things that they'd said they'd done in the moment of crisis so we were interested to find out you know, what those differences were in, in broader terms and whether any of those community level differences might actually be influencing preparedness. I've got so much stuff here that I want to take and I can't grab and you know, I've got my boat and fish tanks and all that sort of stuff and you know, I want to get it but I can't. And although we knew that communities differed in social capital and so on, the thing that was actually predictive at a community level was previous experience with bushfire slash perceptions of risk to my community. And um, that obviously was very important because people who had high perceptions of risk were more likely to prepare. Um, it's not a surprising relationship, but it's not attributable to the individual. It's attributable, in a sense, to a story somehow that has become part of that community's view of itself, if I can put it simply. So it's identifying those communities that have low levels of risk perception and trying to engineer a, a, a higher level of anxiety, frankly, about what it is that could happen in the event of a bushfire. We should be creating an ability to distinguish situations where anxiety is appropriate from situations where anxiety is inappropriate. And the situations where anxiety is appropriate are those where something can be done about the danger that's signalled. Situations where there is a danger that we can do nothing about are situations where anxiety is inappropriate. And what we found with this research is that people who uh, are uh, functioning optimally are people who can experience both high levels of anxiety when it's appropriate while sustaining low levels of anxiety when it's inappropriate. Ten years ago, you know, it was this very dichotomised leave early or stay and defend, and I think the, the fire agencies are much more engaged with and aware of there is, uh, actually the vast majority of people are, are thinking about waiting and seeing, and so they're aware of that, but they really just don't know how to engage with that as a conversation. And I think that's probably one of the big changes is they know that's there, but the agencies don't know how to engage with it and the people who are in that space don't know how to make a decision. The uh, information that we're presenting to the community, uh, whether it be in um, uh, brochures and uh, TV commercials, uh, various strategies that we run face-to-face -face in communities or indeed even in emergency warnings, 
isn't resonating with large sectors of the community. In order to make a real difference in the medium to long term, and it's not something that's going to happen overnight, there needs to be somewhat of a shift in, in um, perceptions within agencies. Uh, in continuing to invest in big red trucks, for example, isn't going to make much difference to public safety. Uh, the real difference is going to be in engaging with communities to build community resilience, and that's going to require a shift in priorities and a shift in funding in agencies in order to make a real difference.